For the record, could you state your name and occupation and then describe the events as you witnessed them on the morning of the 16th of August, 1819? I am William Halton of Halton Park, Justice of the Peace and Chairman of the Manchester Magistrates Committee. On the morning of the 16th of August, 1819, my brother Magistrates and I gathered at Mr Buxton's house, which overlooks St Peter's Field. Between 10 and 11 o'clock, I received information on oath relative to the approach of large bodies of people. From the window, I saw large groups of men marching. I observed that these bodies proceeded regularly, as if in military array. When each group reached the field, the persons in command went up to the hustings to deposit their flags. Many of these flags bore slogans which I deemed to be highly seditious, one of which, in particular, had liberty or death written upon a black background. By one o'clock, there were some 50,000 persons assembled. Was the meeting a cause for concern? This meeting undoubtedly inspired terror in the minds of the respectable inhabitants of Manchester. I received depositions on oath to that effect, and I myself marked the extraordinary manner by which the people approached. Indeed, many gentlemen stated to me that they were greatly alarmed by these proceedings. Manchester and Salford contains a hundred thousand souls. In addition, the town of Manchester is made up of many shops and warehouses, private properties comprising stock of a considerable value. Given these circumstances, it was my opinion that the town was in great danger. And how did you respond to this danger? the Magistrates' Committee deemed it necessary to issue a warrant for the arrest of the supposed leaders of this meeting. This warrant was handed to the Chief Constable, Joseph Naden. However, Mr Naden believed, with good reason, that he would be unable to serve the warrant without the aid of the military. We therefore called for the assistance of the Manchester and Salford Yeomanry Cavalry and the 15th Regiment of Dragoons. What happened when the cavalry arrived? The yeomanry arrived first, and on sight of their appearance, the mob gave out a tremendous shout, hissing and hooting the cavalry. Those who had sticks raised them in the air in a highly menacing manner. The yeomanry drew their swords and advanced towards the stage. Yet when they got closer to it, they were met with a general resistance from the crowd. I saw stones and brickbats flying in all directions. At that moment, the colonel of the dragoons arrived with his men. From the window, I said, Good God, sir, don't you see them attacking the yeomanry? Disperse the crowd! The colonel and his men very swiftly cleared the field of all people, and Mr Hunt was brought back a prisoner. How do you respond to criticism that these were peaceful civilians that were being charged? Ever since the revolution in France, the labouring classes of this neighbourhood have been converted into an infuriated mob, misled and inflamed by the words of objectionable men, such as Henry Hunt. For weeks before the meeting at St Peter's Field, I received report after report of men training in arms upon the moors. Nothing but a conviction of the imminent dangers posed could have induced me to give such orders to the military. I am fully convinced if I had neglected to act, I should have witnessed the destruction of the great manufacturing establishment which I was bound by my duty to guard. The radical reformers are now making a terrible fuss about the so-called Peterloo Massacre and are calling loudly for a parliamentary inquiry. Yet my conduct, that of my fellow magistrates and that of the military, has been fully vindicated. I have received a letter of thanks from both the Prince Regent and the Home Secretary, Lord Sidmouth. Indeed, all men of property, for many miles around, have praised our promptness and firmness, which has saved and preserved the country from witnessing scenes of anarchy and confusion, if not revolution.